Hello everyone, uh, I'm Navarun Nang and welcome to my talk on VMware's vMotion and its reaction to Apache's Geode. Uh, a little short introduction about me. Uh, I spent like four years as a Geode committer and a PMC member. I currently work as a staff software engineer at VMware. Uh, in terms of Geode, like I've worked within gateways, Lucene and the querying engine and contributing on those specific areas right now. Mm, the agenda for this talk will be like, I'll begin with a short introduction about Apache Geode and the topology that we'll be using in this experiment, uh, an explanation of all the terminologies that exist in the VMware's vSphere virtualization platform ecosystem, and then the motivation, the lab setup, the experiments that we conducted, the observations, and the future work related to those experiments. If I had to describe Apache Geode in one line, like I would say it's a low latency, highly concurrent, consistent in-memory data management solution. Two of the major components of a Geode cluster are the locators and the Geode servers. Uh, locators act like uh, coordinators in a distributed system. Um, they manage what members are present in the cluster. Also, as you can see in this diagram, one of their primary jobs is to allow the client to connect to a server like that client requests the locator, hey, I want to connect to a server, and the addresses are provided to the client by the locator. Geode servers, they are like Java processes which actually store the data in the cluster. And also, they also service all the requests that comes from the Geode clients. In this diagram, you can see the white boxes which represents Java, uh, Java processes. And then encapsulating a yellow host machine, that can be a virtual machine or a bare metal uh, next, I would like to explain a couple of terminologies associated with the vSphere environment. First is ESXi, uh, which stands for Elastic Sky X Integrated. Uh, it's one of the bare metal hypervisors uh, created by VMware. As a hypervisor, one of its prime responsibilities is to interpret all the instructions coming in from the virtual machine and send it to the operating system. Uh, second term is vSphere. vSphere is like the brains for a data center. Uh, it handles um, the deployment, the management, administration, monitoring, handling, network, like everything that you can possibly handle in a data center can be handled through a vSphere client. One of the important tools that vSphere has is a distributed resource scheduler. Like any scheduler in computer science world, its main job is to manage workloads and resources, is to assign resources to workloads. In our case, the workloads are virtual machines and the resources are the physical host machines. So in able to do what DRS is able to do, it needs a tool called vMotion. vMotion is a technology that allows a virtual machine to be migrated from one physical host to another without any downtime. So since vMotion is a very important component of our experiment, I'd like to explain like how it's how it migrates one host machine from, sorry, one VM from one host machine to another. So this is done in three phases. So a virtual machine is running in a host system, so it has its pages in the memory of the host machine. So in phase one, it puts tracers monitoring all the memory pages of that particular virtual machine. Like it monitors if any pages are dirty. Then it moves, after all the tracers are installed, it moves to phase two. That's called the pre-copy phase, in which it iteratively copies all the memory pages from one machine to another, while monitoring which pages are dirty. For example, in this first diagram in iteration one, we can see while it was copying the first iteration, two of the pages were dirty. So it will not copy those pages in the first iteration. It'll go on to second iteration. It'll continue multiple iterations till all the pages are copied from host, the source host machine to the destination host machine. Then we go to phase three, which is called the switchover phase, in which we stop all the workload from going into the previous virtual machine and we start migrating them to the new uh, virtual machine, which has been started on a fresh machine. 
Now, these three phases have different impact on a performance uh, of a distributed system. For example, uh, in our experiment, one of the tiny experiments that we did is like we spun up two geo servers and continuously started doing puts on them. And then we triggered vMotion. And we wanted to see what's the impact of different phases on the performance of the uh, geo cluster. So over here, we can see when the memory tracers were uh, attached to the machine, there was this drop in performance. This is because like there's an overhead of bookkeeping, like we're keeping track of which pages are getting dirty. So this reduces the performance a bit. And we see a significant drop over here. This is during pay, uh, phase three, in which we shut down the original VM and switch over all the workload to the newly started virtual machine. So this has the maximum impact on the performance. So over here, you can see the uh, configurations that we had for our physical machines and the virtual machines. But I, I'd like to take some time to explain like why we wanted to do this uh, experiment on what's the need for vMotion or DRS. So one of the obvious reasoning for vMotion is like, assume you have to do a scheduled maintenance on a host machine. So you vMotion all the VMs out of that physical machine, shut the VM, the, shut the host machine down, do your maintenance work and bring back all the vMotion. So that's manual. One of the important um, features of automated DRS is to have a self-driving data center. So as a DRS, if the DRS is set in automated mode, it has the entire holistic view of what resources are available in my data center and what workload is coming in. So it'll continuously try to optimize and get the maximum performance out of a data center without any human intervention. So this is one of the prime feature that vMotion had, an automated DRS. So, but when initial versions of uh, vMotion were introduced, it had a significant impact on the performance and that made the virtual machines uh, unresponsive for a little bit of time. But we also know in our distributed systems, we have protocols set up in the membership and communication layers in which if a member is unresponsive for a particular amount of time, we decide to kick it out of the distributed system. Like how Geode's membership and communication protocols have a default value of 15 seconds. Like if a member is not responsive for 15 seconds, we'll just kick it out of the distributed system or the cluster. But now that has like serious implications. Like if a particular number of VMs are kicked out, it may lead to a split brain scenario, which can have an adverse effect on the Geode cluster. So the goal of our experiment was to go with the worst case scenario and see if performance returns to the stable state or if any of the geode members were kicked out while the vMotion uh, migrations were occurring. Uh, here are a brief description of the workloads that we used for our experiment. Uh, for read, we went with OQL query. OQL stands for object query language, which is like a NoSQL language, which we use to query fields within a Java object or the entire Java object itself. Then we have for write operations, we started using putall. Putall is like a batch operation, like it chunks a uh, group of write and just sends it down. So for this, we did a batch operation of 1,000 portfolio objects. Portfolio objects were the instances of the portfolio class. Um, portfolio, if people are familiar with the Apache Geo uh, code base, portfolio class is the one that is used for all our testing, benchmarking, and everything. Uh, for our experiments, we filled up the Geode cluster with 15 gigs of data, which comes around approximately 30 gigs with replication. So how we did the migration. So in this diagram, you can see that every member in the cluster undergoes migration. So we went with the worst case scenario in which we continuously keep on migrating all the members of the cluster one after one while the workloads are running. To see like if Geode can survive this worst case scenario, we're sure that it will survive in a normal day-to-day -day operation. So, and how did we trigger this uh, migration? So we used uh, vSphere's SDKs to create an app. So once the data was filled up and we started our experiment, we could trigger vMotion using this app. A uh, couple of, uh, the next couple of slides will show you our observation on different workloads and what was the impact on the Geode cluster. So over here in the first uh, client throughput graph, we can see that once the client skipped on it. So first of all, this is the experiment setup. 
in which we had four apps which were doing continuous OQL queries on the geo data grid. So in the throughput chart, we can see that when the clients keep on attaching and then the work, uh, so there's an increase in number of clients connected to the system. So there's an increase in the workload and then it attains a steady state. And then we trigger the migration of all the geo uh, members present in the grid. So a total of 28 um, virtual machine migration happened during this uh, duration. And we see that performance drop gets back and then immediately returns to a steady state once our once all the migrations have completed. We can see a similar behavior in the server throughput. Here we see step-by-step step when the four clients connected, attains a stable state, undergoes all the vMotion, and then returns to a stable state. This was for our read workload, and we could see similar uh, observations during our write workload. We had four apps which were doing write operation on our geode grid, and we can see virtual motion, uh, migration happening, impacting the performance, and then returning to a steady state. And same can be seen on this server side. Then we decided to go to a different mixed workload experiment in which uh, we set up two apps to do continuous querying, which is a read operation, and two apps to do uh, write operation. And we observed a similar behavior in both client, uh, both clients, which are doing the read and the write operations. VMotion migration, drop in performance, return back to their normal steady state once all the migrations were complete. So once the migration happens, the VMs maintain their network address, uh, network name. So it, it's, it's as if the same member that existed before prior to the migration. Uh, we also scrubbed through all the logs and stats to see that, to confirm that no members were kicked out during this migration phase. Uh, if you look at numbers, we can see that for read and write workloads, there were a dip of 39% to 45%. And the vMotion duration on average took 36 seconds. This is like all the three phases of vMotion completed within 36 seconds. And there was a drop of 39 to 45, depending upon the workload. Now we went with the worst case scenario. This is like, this will like hardly occur in a proper data center. We went, uh, we also wanted to see what happens in a regular day-to-day -day ops. Like if one single server gets a vMotion migration so over here, we can see that for a small duration, there will be a dip and return back to the steady state immediately after the migration is completed. Similar observation for write ops with a blip and it's back to its normal operation. During our read measurements, we could see that there were like, so there were four apps depending which client was connected to which server, if it was unlucky enough to be connected to the server, which uh, underwent v vMotion migration to have a slightly higher dip in performance for 10 seconds. And we can see that dips varied from 18% dip to a max of 35 between the four apps doing the read operations. For uh, write operations, we could see a dip for 15 um, to 17, sorry, 10% minimum to 17% on average. So what's the conclusion for this experiment? We could confirm that there was a temporary drop in performance, but it was for a short duration. And we could see that they resumed their normal steady state operation immediately after, uh, after the vMotion migrations have completed. We also confirmed that during this migration, no members became unresponsive or kicked out by Geode's uh, uh, membership and communication protocols. And we could see an average decrease of 40% uh, in the throughput during this migration duration. So the future. So recently vSphere 7 was released and they are re-architecting entire vSphere based on the Kubernetes framework. Uh, so they have implemented more algorithms in which when we attach the memory tracers, the impact on memory tracing and performance is minimized and also saturating the network so that the switchover phase is faster and there's a shorter dip in performance during that time. So we are also in discussions with creating a collaborative system in which vSphere informs Geo that, hey, we are about to migrate a particular server or a member. And our membership protocol can take mitigation steps like not allowing clients to connect to that particular step, a uh, particular server when it's about to undergo vMotion migration. So these are the things that we are currently working on and looking forward in the future. So a detailed, a detailed report has been published by VMware, which you can find at this link. 
and I'm ready for some questions. All right, I guess I'll wait for one minute. If there is no, no questions, we can finish up the session. Thank you, Alberto. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thank you.